This segment describes the hike to the Tarbigan Tunnel from the Many Glacier area. The first two and a half miles rises just about 700 feet until the Tarbigan Falls. From there, the trail climbs another 1,000 feet in a mile and a half to Tarbigan Lake. The final push is a 600 foot, one mile climb to the tunnel and the amazing view on the other side. The trail is shared by the Iceberg Lake Trail and the trailhead is located behind the Swift Current Motor Inn parking lot at about 5,300 feet. The footage from here to the falls was taken the day I hiked to Iceberg Lake as I used a better camera. The steady climb is mostly out of the trees with nice views of the surrounding mountains. The area is frequented by bears, so make noise and practice other bear safety precautions. The temperature was in the 40s and the sky was threatening on this early September day. One of my favorite things about hiking in Glacier is the tree line is pretty low and you're often hiking above it. So here you get to see the mountains, not just a bunch of trees. The trail does go through a few groves and in one of them there was some bear scat. If you haven't seen bear scat before, you need to know what it looks like. Big pile of bear scat. This pile is a bit old, so hopefully the bear left the area. This was the first day the trail had been open in weeks because of bear activity. It was closed the next day for the same reason. And if you see bear scat, be alert. These folks were heading to the Iceberg Lake, but now they're retreating because a mama bear and two of her cubs were using the trail. I got this footage from a hiker who got out of the way and shot some phone footage of the bear family. This footage was responsible for closing the trail the next day. Bear activity frequently closes this trail, so if it's open, do it, because it might be closed tomorrow. The bears were seen heading safely into the woods, so the group turned around again and headed back to Iceberg. The first leg of the trail ends at Tarbigan Falls, and here they are. In the case you're wondering how long it took a 50-year-old man to get there. Tarbigan Falls took an hour and two minutes or so to get here. Well, the two. falls are nice, but not spectacular, especially when the water is this low. But it's a good place to have a snack and rest before the steepest part of the trail. Not far from the bridge, there's a side trail with a signpost pointing to the Tarbigan Tunnel. The Tarbigan Trail Where goes to the right and up the slope. And I knew this was going to be a tough hike. It's 2,300 feet up from the trailhead. So on this leg of the journey, I decided to take the lightest camera I owned at the time. It wasn't a very good camera, so I shot some stills, too. The weather kept changing, and while there were clearings, much of the trail is in dense forest, which makes it easier to surprise a bear. And after about an hour or so, I was well above treeline and in a cirque. There was also a hole next to the trail, which was recently dug. You know, probably by a bear. Here's some of the bad video of the Cirque and Tarmigan Lake. Miles away. It was drizzling and getting colder. And one reason I'm showing you this shot is just to point out how quickly cameras have gotten better. The camera used here isn't that old, but it uses an obsolete technology called videotape. Today, cell phones have much better cameras. And the switchbacks may look like they're cut into a sheer cliff wall, but they weren't too bad. It took only 20 minutes to climb the remaining 600 vertical feet to the tunnel. Here are my first impressions. Okay, two hours, 49, 48 minutes. Heart rate 119, it was much, it was 140, so I'm coming up this hill. Last bit of 600 feet of up. There's the switchbacks in the trails. Not fun. Started out five and a half, 5.2 miles that way. Started raining bottom of the lake or well, halfway up the lake there's the tunnel it's cold it's raining it's cold it's raining I'm here tired but the view's not bad you know it's not bad I'm not sure it's worth all this effort but I've finally been here and I've done it my disappointment wouldn't last for long this is the tunnel it's only about 60 feet long and the day before, it was occupied by a bear who was using it as a shelter. But this is the view from the other side. It definitely made this trip worth all the effort. The rapidly changing weather was a bit unnerving, but it made for very dramatic and impressive images. To the right, you see red rock 
that was laid down in a shallow sea millions of years ago. And that's Elizabeth Lake in the valley. There were a few other hikers up there, and we discussed the situation. While I was talking to one of them, I looked down, straight down. Then I quickly snapped several pictures. And it's a good thing I did, because a few minutes later, the clouds had moved in. And visibility dropped to near zero. It was time to start thinking about getting back down, safely. I took in the view for a while, but once the view had gone, there was no reason to stay. It was time to start thinking about heading down. They said a cold front was coming through, and I think it was coming through till tomorrow. On the other side, the clouds were even more dramatic. They were just rolling over the 8,000-foot divide. And by the way, I was so captivated by the weather that once again I forgot to take a shot inside the tunnel. And when you're out here, you're pretty much on your own. There are no reliable weather forecasts here. And the mountains tend to make up their own weather anyway. And remember, there's no cell phone coverage. So you can't call somebody or look at a radar app on your phone. It's an interesting predicament. There are over five miles and 2,300 feet of potentially slippery slope to go. And the trail goes through lightning-attracting, tree-lined bear country. It's impossible to know whether it's better to wait or to go. So I just enjoy the uniqueness of the experience. <laughs> it really was quite amazing. Then I had a snack and was about to head down. It's leading pretty good. Cold fronts come through. When it started to sleet. Most people just came down. If it continued, it would be a rather slippery descent. So once again, I had to decide, do I stay or do I go? Well, I decided to go. 45 minutes later, I was 1,300 feet lower. It was raining, and this is what I had to say. It's 36 degrees, I'm fogging up. About a thousand more feet to down to go, about three miles or so, maybe two. It's pretty cool, but now it was kind of scary before. And after the rain came the fog. The video camera kept fogging up, so I switched to the still camera again. Sometimes this hindered the view. At other times, it made it interesting. And when I got below the fog, the clouds got really interesting. I've hiked hundreds of miles in this park, and this hike was one of the most memorable. The cold, rain, sleet, and fog made it special. And I also captured one of my favorite images. I've shot thousands of images here since 1994. And in the few minutes that the valley and hill and lake was visible, I was able to stitch together one of my favorite shots. So let's do a quick recap on the Tarbingen Trail hike. It is one of my favorites. And the trailhead is just behind the Swift Current Motor Inn. It starts out in the open, and it's pretty easy. Then it gets quite hard on the way up. It is frequented by bears. It's often closed because of too much bear activity. So if you're here and the trail happens to be open, take it when you can. You never know when it's going to be closed. And later in the year, August, September, it's much more likely that that will happen. 